call it Open Topic Friday, Ladies Night. 88 people now in the room. Start dropping your topics in there. Uh, we have, of course, Karen Quinn Tostado. Welcome to the program, Karen. And, and hi, everybody in the, in the chat. Hi, hi, and I want to introduce you to Christina Malik Consolo. Uh, Christina, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Charlie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Christina. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It is such a lovely panel tonight, I might add. So thank you both <laughs> for being here. Uh, Christina, I, I read, uh, I read that the information you sent me on uh, the latest of Fukushima. Um, we have about eight minutes or so until the break. I read, I read the information you sent me, plus uh, watched that video you sent me, which was, uh, I'll go ahead and dig that out and put it in chat during the break. Uh, but, but last time you were on here, you, you, you talked a little bit about, you know, the, the radiation levels that have spiked all over the country um, and, and in some areas, you know, off the chart, and this information is hard to get to. So let's, let's, let's start with the, the fresh information that you just sent me. Um, what's been going on with Fukushima now, you know, most of this audience knows that disaster is ongoing. They, they'll ignore it, but that doesn't make it go away. What is going on uh, that, that you shared with me in the last uh, three or four, let's say in the last week, uh, that should cause us all a, uh, a lot of great concern? You know, I, I started doing the, the weather forecast, predicting um, where the, the highest potential would be for fallout based on the releases going on at the plant, um, the uh, rainfall, estimations from NOAA and the uh, jet stream forecast. And uh, so far we've been right 100% of the time. Um, just in the last two days, in fact, uh, Reno, Bakersfield, Phoenix, and Idaho Falls are reading far above what EPA considers a uh, danger level of 300 CPM. Um, in fact, Bakersfield... Is that, is that does that have to do with what's occurring over there the last few days? Well, in the last few weeks, there, there's been a lot of strange lights and, and a neutron beam reaction showing up on the, the cameras, and that's an indication that there's ongoing um, criticalities of the fuel that's um, leaked out of the pressure vessels and down into the ground underneath the plants. The researchers at Kyoto University in Japan are estimating that the corium blobs, which each weigh about 150 tons, are now anywhere from 30 to 40 feet under the plant. And the, the real danger is, in, in addition to the continuous, um, the continuous releases, is that if the blobs hit a, a large enough vein of groundwater that there could be something called a hydrovolcanic explosion, which could blow the entire grounds of Fukushima sky high. Everything would go up into the air, all over the countryside, um, and, and into the ocean. And what lands in the ocean is actually um, kind of protected by being underwater. But what we would need to do in that type of situation is basically what the Civil Defense Department told us we'd need to do back in the 60s when that was, you know, there was the, the fear that, that Russia was going to... Uh, nuke us at some point. Right. They did extensive research about how to uh, mitigate such a disaster, and people would need to shelter indoors for a period of 14 to 30 days to allow this enormous plume of radioactive material to float over us and, and settle down. And it actually could be a good thing because we get it all over with at once. And you and I talked about last time about what TEPCO was saying their, their goal was for a cold shutdown, and they were saying by the end of December that they would have it in cold shutdown, but they're talking about the pressure vessels, and that's what all their gauges are monitoring. That stuff isn't in those vessels anymore. It's, it's underground. Right, right. So and I, I want to back up. Is a, is a myth, and they've changed that now in 30 years. It just yeah. came out since the last time it was on, said 30 years, but... Michio Taku, who's a uh, famous uh, astrophysicist, is saying that it's going to take centuries, in his estimation, to decommission these plants because all of the machinery, the cranes, and and all that stuff that they use to, to move the fuel around, those have all been destroyed. So they don't have really any equipment except the cranes that are there now on site. And, and once radiation gets to certain levels, machines don't work anymore either, and they've had problems with that. They keep sending robots 
into the reactor because people can't go in there and the robots are, are breaking and not coming out again because they can't function in such high levels. Well, um, I want to back up a little bit, Christina. I, I want to back sure. up just a little bit because I, I've dropped in there into the chat room now several times that video you sent me, which is obviously from distance uh, looking at the reactors, and you see these flashing these flashing orbs. And at first I thought it was... You know, at first I thought it was like a, a police uh, lights or something like that, but then obviously there's no personnel that close to these reactors. Uh, and, and then you realize that from, from the, the scale, from the distance that it's at, that they're very large. You know, so, guys, as you're in the chat room looking at this video, um, first of all, where did that video come from? And second of all, describe a little bit of what, we're, what you think we're looking at with these, these flashing orbs. Well, I, I've been trying to determine that, too, and, and there's a couple of clues that we have. For, well, in, in relation to the reactors, those reactors are huge. They're some of the largest nuclear reactors in the world. And um, what, where that flash is occurring is actually a, a story above ground level, so it really couldn't be a beacon. Um, if it is, it's an awfully big one. There's, um, there's a possibility because they've been having problems with hydrogen buildup, and, and they're actually injecting um, nitrogen into the reactors one, two, and three right now to help uh, relieve some of that because the hydrogen is very explosive. That's what triggered the original explosions back in March. Right. Um, they're trying to mitigate that, and, and some people have been saying, well, it could be just burning off of hydrogen, but hydrogen burns orange. And um, at times, in fact, in the, in the last 24 hours now, this this uh, fire or, or beacon or whatever it is, is uh, yellow and it's flashing green at times. And the only thing that I knew that could possibly flash green or burn green was copper. So I started looking into that last night, and there's another element that burns green called chromium. And chromium is an alloy that they mix in with zirconium to make the cladding of the fuel rods. And a week ago, they sent robots into Unit 3. The robot didn't, didn't come out again. Um, and they think that it stirred up some possible fuel rods or, or highly radioactive material because the on-site monitoring shot up three times what it had been before. And they've actually reduced some of the workers temporarily because there's nothing they can, they can't really work in that area. And that's where this light is, is right next to that reactor number three. So, so once again, again once again, we... So, once again, and, and then what else you covered a, a second ago, but we would be almost better off, you know, if, if this was some kind of reaction occurring, we'd almost be better off for it to go down and, and hit uh, uh, groundwater and explode just so it, it, it gets this uh, material out and then we can start the uh, decontamination process because the way it's going now, it's going to take centuries uh, as this just kind of percolates out. Um, and e even in your email you sent to me, I thought it was very uh, poetic. You know, if they have a minor explosion, it's even worse because then you just end up with a nuclear tea bag off the coast of uh, uh, Japan, you know, contaminating the ocean for, for who knows how many years. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that, that they could have done, and, and, you know, we can speculate endlessly about how the situation should be handled. It's been, it was handled all wrong. They, they should have used the, the model of, of how Russia dealt with Chernobyl. They actually um, dug a six-foot-tall lane underneath the reactor in Chernobyl and backfilled it with concrete and boron, boron stop fission. And so yeah. that's how they kept it from going into the ground and hitting groundwater. But you well, know, nothing uh, you done know. like that here. They could have put a moat around it. They, you know, they could have... Yeah, right. Well, everything, everything that's being done now is, is to convince us that everything's okay, so we'll go on with the life as normal, and it certainly is not. Uh, Christina Hayteig, Karen Quintos, Dotto, I know you're there. And I want to get your take on it too. I saw you drop some information about uh, radiation levels into the chat room. And I also want to get your take on the latest uh, legislative nightmare that just occurred. So we're going to be back with Karen Quinto Estado as well as uh, Christina Malik Consolo. There's a lot of uh, Latina names I'm trying to get out here tonight. And I think I'm doing a great job of it. So be, hang out, guys. Six minutes from now, we'll be back with the lady during the commercials. We had about uh, 70, 60, there was an audio problem. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake Radio. I am your host, Charlie McGrath. It is Open Topic Friday, and uh, thanks to everybody who hung out. We still have uh, 100 people sitting in the chat room. I appreciate you guys uh, enduring the commercials. If you're watching on JTV, 
We had about uh, 70, 67 people in there. There was an audio problem, uh, audio feed, or the, the uh, image was seizing up. And I don't, I, I reboot it, so hopefully it's uh, better now. Somebody said it was because of all the advertisements being run over on uh, JTV. But uh, anyway, it's rebooted now, so hopefully that, that runs uh, true the rest of the program. Um, Karen Quinn Tostado, I, I, we, were, we were talking with Christina about Fukushima. That video she sent me is pretty alarming. You put some information in there uh, about radiation levels, I believe. Uh, what is your take on the ongoing crisis and the, uh, the blatant uh, forgetting of this crisis by the mainstream media, by our so-called leadership? It's almost like a non-event, uh, just like the Gulf uh, oil disaster still having, you know, millions of people affected by this crisis. Uh, but, you know, as soon as it's uh, as soon as soon it's out of the uh, news cycle, it doesn't exist anymore. Well, it's another travesty, and I definitely believe that in generations to come, we have huge problems until and unless we begin to tackle this. I don't know um, anymore exactly, Charlie, what to believe. And, Christina, maybe you can help me with this. I've got a question for you because I've got a – friend who's a homestone oracle who says actually that he believes nobody was looking for radiation in the first place before Fukushima and that weather patterns made it impossible for it to bring it here to the states that went to Russia and China. He feels that it continued for about six months and then now we might have fallout in some weather fronts, but that Fukushima uh, is being used as a scapegoat for existing contamination from power plants, hospitals, labs, and uh, previously atomic bombs that were set off and things like that. What do you think of that? Well, um, I, I put out a video about a week ago on the uh, peak, peak testing levels during 1963 before the comprehensive test ban went into effect. Um, the United States government hurried up and did 250 detonations in Nevada um, because they knew they weren't going to be able to do it after that, and that year, SAT scores dropped 12 percent across the country. During the peak releases from Fukushima, those releases were a thousand times higher than the highest levels during peak testing. And I've got all the stats on, on what um, the radiation levels were um, in the first week after the explosion. Eureka, California, came in 3.05 times higher than what the readings were in a year higher. San Diego was 12 times higher, 24 times higher. Um, Salt Lake City, Portland, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Riverside, Orlando, Hilo, San Francisco, Omaha. I mean, the, the list is just unbelievable. And that's right after Hillary came back from, from Japan and signing the, the treaty. They took these graphs offline. These, these graphs are supposed to be up forever. Right, so that we can monitor all these different, you know, the fallout from the, the testing that's been done. And, and it, there very well could be releases coming from plants around here. In fact, if you look at um, something called a rain shadow and uh, see where the highest levels of autism are in the country, and you know, autism is a, is a, a possible effect from, um, from radiation exposure, they're all around these plants the highest levels of autism in the areas where, where it rains around these plants. So there's definitely a release. The, the cancer rates in children are about 5% higher around the new plants that we have here. So, I mean, regardless of where it's coming from, though, you know, there's things that we can be doing to protect ourselves, which is basically healthy living. And, you know, even if it turned out this is a complete hoax and there's no radiation and all these experts are wrong, if you made these changes in your life, well, mortality rates should go down. Well, right yeah. now, they're going up. They've gone up significantly since March, 5% right, and I know the entire that, country. Uh, birth, also, infant mortality has gone up here on the West Coast since that. And I personally do think that it's having an effect. There's just so much out there, but I think the bigger thing that people hopefully are starting to understand is this is also a depopulation move. I mean, the United Nations has said they want a billion people on the planet, and they are doing everything in their power in order to make that happen. But this is kind of a soft kill because we're not going to be able to really connect it five years down the line, all the cancers, all the things that happen. Until and unless we stop ignoring all this corruption, we'll get more of the same. 
And now, also, I'd like to bring up the uh, Senate Bill 1860.